Alrighty, let's play this in full first. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. A couple of things here. Changing the color, I think that's a nice texture. I think potentially grabbing something a bit warmer. I mean, there's, there's a big orange cast here in terms of the light. If you want to put in uh, like a, a light that will emulate that and maybe giving this a bit of a stronger color. I was concerned it's all a bit, a bit muted there. Things where you would potentially you know, put maybe white on the nails and on the horns or the teeth. It's like more elements that will stand out to identify the creature. And depending on how you want to present it, I would still give it a bit of an orangey color light there. Just kind of bring it in together. I mean, imagine your dragon is all white, for instance. That could be something to really stand out. The main thing that I'm seeing here, it's a bit of a... I know this is tricky because the pank moves really fast. But what happens now is that you have, this is cool, like that I buy, that it pulls the legs away from it. But what happens is that you get this really big pop in in the wings. I would try to stabilize these as much as you can. Because otherwise you're having this shape really pop up here, pop out into this, and then come back down. And then the same with the body. For the body to pop up, and then down here, and then up there, just... That moment there feels too light, and it doesn't quite, it doesn't feel quite right. Then you get into a lot of magic in terms of how the dragon stays up. So as it goes back and starts to fall, you can see how it starts to ease in. But there's no way you can do that, because the wings are only flapping now. So up until this moment here between these two flaps, the dragon would still be falling. So you got to... Find a way potentially of this really opening up the wings first, and during this, it, they're already there, ready to flap to get back up here. And I think your drops are a bit too fast. There's a lot of a up and a big drop, and again, you're easing in and stopping before the wings can come down and stop the fall. So there's a lot of magical stuff happening. Same thing here as you come up, it kind of hits a bit of a wall. You can see the freeze in the root there. Stop. That feels better as it drops. You're starting to flap and come up. That feels better. That hole up there feels a bit better. Now you're a bit early on that on that body move up, just a bit. That's not too bad. Again, too early on the move up a bit. And I would probably push this and and cheat a bit where your wings, usually your wings, they go back to front, but get this a bit more of a phew, back. So that as you're kind of doing this, that the wings will end up being back there. It's a visual cheat just to kind of show the audience going back there for a forward move. This one, again, it gets a bit into magic land where you're going up, but then going the other way and holding, holding, holding for so long while the wings are doing really nothing. Then same thing again. We're stopping too soon. Again, those the, <coughs> the stop of the roots would happen around here between these two favoring this frame then it goes up hang time is good here again stopping too soon like there's nothing that stops the drop in terms of the wings so these are for me the biggest things and also i will go up and maybe drop this far and then flap like this it's a big distance you're covering every time there are flaps so the combination of all of that is a bit tricky and then you have a very slow drop just physics wise, I don't quite buy that section. And then with the wings again, a bit late for that recovery. And then watch out. This is very fast. This move up here. If you would go this fast, I would still slow it down. But it feels like then you would initiate something like this in terms of the arc trajectory. But then it kind of stops and goes down fairly straight. So watch out for paths like that. Again, this seems a bit magical how it goes down and kind of starts to go this way while pointing this way. And especially this, how it starts to stop. And I know the wings come out for a bit of a glide stop. But then you got to still have a little half flap and then flap again to come back up. And this just feels like a curling in and not really a, a strong flap down here to get into 
that exit. And also just visually, I'll bring that tail up. Just kind of free up the silhouette on this. So that's that. I know a lot of notes, but I would I would really look at the the feel of how you change things on a frame by frame basis. Those one frame changes are a bit tricky, and really the the physics of when it goes up and down and how far you go up and down. Really look at that first as a a major thing. And even this, you might go a bit more three quarters, so you don't have the head in front of the body. It kind of messes up the silhouette a little bit. Let me see here. Something around there. I'm trying to find a frame. It's a bit more three quarters. Like all of that straight towards us is tricky. Because if you squint, you're just losing the head and have this tail right in the middle between the legs. It's just a bit funky. And I would stay more within a three quarter, like something like that. Like that kind of thing. And again, if you get the membrane in different colors so that the, the head stands out more, that kind of position during this section, I think, will be a bit better. And since you go out here, you might land a bit here, three quarter to look at this. And that's that. All right, I know picky, 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 but that's hopefully helpful. Thanks. All right. There's an email, you can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.